Hello everyone and welcome. I am Dr. Floyd Richmond and today we're going to be talking about Sonata Form. Sonata Form is a organization that pieces followed uh, extensively during the classical period uh, but also during romantic and surrounding periods as well. It continues to be an important uh, form for composing music today. The sonata form is usually applied to instrumental uh, pieces that would be piano sonatas, uh, sonatas for symphonies, and so on. Uh, the sonata form is uh, often found for solo instruments as well. Uh, you can find uh, Paul Hindemith wrote uh, sonatas for uh, virtually all of the uh, wind and string instruments. And those have become very well known in the repertoire. It's pretty much standard to play those sonatas as well as many of the more traditional romantic and classical sonatas in the mastery of any given instrument. Uh, the sonata form begins with an introduction and an introduction, I don't think I need to explain uh, what that is to anyone, basically it's just a attention getting phrase. It might contain material from the song that's going to be upcoming. Uh, it, it just uh, is usually a little bit bold and proclamatory to uh, gather everybody's attention. And then we move into the section of the piece that is known as the exposition. In a traditional sonata, there are two primary melodies, which we call themes. The A theme is typically given in the tonic key, and the B theme is typically given in the dominant key. After we have played the exposition, and the tonic and dominant keys there's frequently a repeat not always but very often there is and then we move into a special section of the piece called the development section the development section is much more fantasy like and it takes the a theme and the b theme and gives fragments of each of them sometimes mixed together uh, sometimes transposed to new keys sometimes uh, treated with uh, variation anything that would just be development or fantasy on these melodies would be fair game for the development section after some time of development then the original themes occur again the a theme typically occurs again as before in the tonic key and the b theme this time will typically also occur in the tonic key after all we're getting ready to end the piece and so we don't need to be harmonically adventuring off somewhere else that is going to take us away from the home key the home key is where we want to end the piece the coda is simply an ending uh, a tag that is placed at the end of a piece uh, it frequently has a lot of 5-1 cadences and uh, brings the piece home uh, it just says thank you for listening you've been a great audience uh, please come back and hear us play again and it does bring the the key the song harmonically home to the tonic key as well okay all of this is uh, head knowledge and i think that it is going to make a lot of a lot more sense if we would now hear this in an actual sonata okay we're going to listen to the sonata now and i will uh, give, uh, call the uh, sections as we get to each of them once again before we begin i'll just go ahead and tell you we start with the exposition no introduction we start with the a theme here's the a theme of the sonata cadence in G B theme in G major, the dominant key, straight into the development section. With cadence in G major, the development is in G minor. Oh, but it's modulating quickly to new keys. Mm -hmm. 
A theme in F major, the subdominant key. in G major, but the B theme in the tonic key, C major. What a wonderful and delightful sonata. Uh, it has all the elements that we would expect of a sonata. Uh, let me just go back over here and uh, have a look at this. Yes, note, well, okay, it doesn't have all the elements we would expect of a sonata. There is, for example, no introduction. Uh, it is, of course, optional. There is also, of course, no coda. It is also optional. It does have the exposition, as expected at the very beginning. It begins with the A theme. Dum, pom, 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 ba -da -dum. And then it also has the B theme. I'm going to sing it in the tonic key so it's more in my range. Ba -dum, pom. Okay. And uh, then it uh, moves into a development section where, where he rapidly explores a number of new keys. The B theme ends in G major, but in the development section, the very first hearing of the theme is in G minor. The recapitulation is a little bit unusual in this particular sonata in that it uh, begins with the A theme in the key of F major, which is the subdominant key. Uh, most sonatas would actually have the A theme back in the original key. Uh, the B theme is almost always in the tonic key or the one key, and the reason for that is because we need to end the song in the original key in which we started and that gives a sense of completion and a sense of coming home. Uh, there is no coda uh, added to this particular piece, but uh, it would be kind of fun to maybe actually write a little coda, uh, just a few 5-1 cadences in the same style. That would be a great adventure sometime. So let's go ahead and compose the sonata real quickly real uh, here. I'm just going to go ahead and, and do this in the most brief uh, format, just melody only. So the first thing we're going to need is going to be an A theme. And uh, why don't we actually use a theme that's uh, pretty familiar to us. We'll just go ahead and uh, use the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So, uh, excuse me here while I zoom in just a little bit. Okay. And since this begins, uh, okay, so that will be my A theme. This will be my B theme. Oh, it looks like I accidentally put a tie in on that. And now uh, we've got a sonata that begins with no introduction. Starts right on the uh, theme. And uh, we're using a familiar tune. Uh, it's easy to compose these types of tunes, though. So, ta da pa da pa 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 da 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 da. And then we'll do the B theme, pa da. And notice that this all actually starts on C, and this actually starts on G, although it's certainly not in G. I think um, maybe just to modify this a little bit and make our B theme in the key of G, I can actually. Uh, modify this a little bit. Ba -da -da -da, da -da -da. Yeah, so 
we'll use this as a starting place and then uh, kind of taking us back down to end on a five chord there and maybe move into a development section okay so now I need a development section and so what I think I will do is just go um, ba, da, da, bum, ba, da, bum, bum. and then I think I shall uh, make it minor oops not that one ba, da, da, da. Dun. Oh, I'm liking this. Okay, so that was a little bit of a uh, uh, very um, variation or development of this particular thing. Ba da 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 ti da da da. Ba da 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 da. Yeah, like I say, I do like that. Okay, I think I'll just go ahead and uh, make that last couple of beats here. And now, uh, let's uh, take a little bit of a B theme in here. And uh, we had already modified the B theme a little bit. Ba -da 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 -da. I think I just like that. I'm going to go ahead and just repeat it again exactly as is. Okay, so I've had a nice little development there. The development can go on for some period of time. I think that uh, maybe what I would uh, like to do is uh, just take this idea of alternating these two themes, but perhaps I can get a little bit adventuresome with them and uh, change this one maybe to a new key. I'm going to uh, transpose this diatonically up a second. All right, so it's almost the same theme, but uh, slightly different here. Not sure that I like an F flat um, at that particular point. So, and then really, you can probably in your development section uh, do something somewhat unique like that two or three times before it gets uh, old to our listeners. So I will do it yet a third time. And then a fourth time, I'll kind of uh, come out of it and end the development section. So let's take this part right here. And we'll transpose it up another, well, uh, second, we'll go a third up this time. And I'm once again not happy with that particular note, so I'm going to uh, change that. And now I need to uh, get some place where we can uh, call this home. So I'm going to just kind of do a little scale-like run. Yeah, there we go. All right, nice. And so now, I uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and label some of these sections. I'll double click on this part right here. Oops, I think I'm using my chord tool and my, not my expression tool. I frequently use the expression tool to uh, put uh, technique text in. That would be something that would be useful for labels here. I'll duplicate one of these. I'll edit it. I will call this um, exposition. and I'll place that right up there at the top. I'm also going to go ahead and double click on this as well and I'm going to uh, duplicate that and edit a bit. I'm going to call this the A theme and assign that right there. Yep, that actually works. That is the A theme. It starts at that point. I'm going to double click on this one, duplicate this one, and call it the B theme. Assign it right here. So, yep, that's definitely the B theme. I'm going to double click on this one up here under exposition. I'm going to duplicate that one, edit it, and I'm going to call it the development and tell it OK and assign it there. 
and this entire section is the development section. This is the way a sonata is written. You have an exposition. Uh, it uh, takes an A theme, it takes a B theme, and then it does some fantasy-like development on that A theme. And then, before the end of the piece is over, we're going to need to come back to the A theme and the B theme again. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to paste that in there. There's the A theme and the B theme. Uh, this time it's not called the exposition. Uh, this time I'm going to delete that one. Double click on this. Uh, duplicate one of these again and I'm going to edit it and I'm not going and I am going to call it the recapitulation. Frequently just call it the recap. Uh, okay, so the only thing that I really need to do to wrap this sonata up now is to go ahead and uh, get the key centers correct. So this particular key portion right here especially has been uh, transposed to the key of G. I'm just going to go ahead and transpose that down a perfect fifth so that it's back in the original key. Make sure you hit the direction down make sure you tell it that it's uh, chromatically a perfect fifth and tell it okay and then I think we do need to uh, one more note to take us totally back home to our tonic key and that will be yep, that note right there the C so let's hear our sonata here we go from the beginning. Uh, let me make sure that my speaker is working. A theme. B theme in the dominant key. Development. Uh, that theme I used over and over in this portion. It's almost like a little call and response. Anything is fair game in the development section. And now a little run to come out of this. And a lot of sonatas have transitions that take us back to key centers. And... Uh, set the stage for the next melody. So that was a recapitulation, the A theme in the tonic key and the B theme also in the tonic key. And we could call that note a coda, which just brings us back home to the tonic key as well. Okay, there you have it. A simple and easy method of composing a sonata. Uh, your assignment is going to be to compose a sonata uh, using note flight and post that on the forum for this class. Alright, thanks so much. May God richly bless you.